So we will now uh, enter the, the introductory phase of today's program where our participants will have an opportunity to talk a little bit about themselves, their research interests, uh, and the kind of work that they do by using the research profiles slides as a guide. So each presenter will have two minutes to introduce themselves. Yeah, you may notice at the bottom right of this slide, there is a green bar that is uh, steadily moving towards the right side of the screen or should be anyway. Um, there it goes. Uh, when that green bar hits the edge, uh, that is your time. Uh, it's, it's automatically advances after two minutes. So fair warning, we will uh, mute you at that two minute mark to allow the next presenter an opportunity to begin. In between each slide is a five second transition uh, slide which displays the next presenter's name, which is also at the, well, April, if you could go back. Sorry, that last one there is time 30 seconds because I thought I could get through the content in 30 seconds instead of two minutes. Um, uh, the next presenter's name is listed at the bottom right, right above that timer slide, so you can see who's coming up next. And then it is also on the uh, five second transition slide so that you have an opportunity to unmute yourself before your uh, presentation begins. If uh, someone is absent, we will leave their slide up on screen for about a minute to allow everybody a chance to read their content, jot down their, their contact information, and get in touch with them afterwards. And then uh, finally, as always, please remain muted until it is your turn to present. And if you have any questions or issues throughout, please feel free to send uh, me a message through the Zoom chat. So next slide now, please. This is the order of today's presenters. Uh, this is gonna stay up here for about 30 seconds so you can find yourself and uh, see where you fall within the order uh, this morning. Also take a, a screenshot or pull out your phone and take a photo if you want so you can remember. And when that green bar, it hits the right side of the screen, it will advance automatically. Then there'll be five seconds and our first presenter will go ahead. Okay, you may have to you may have to advance this one manually. There we go. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, my name is Brandon Crick. I'm a professor at FAMU FSU College of Engineering. And my research is primarily in materials tribology. So looking at friction and wear of materials, um, including solid lubricant materials, as well as other lubricated interfaces. Um, our research related to space, we do a lot. Uh, we have a lot of tools in our lab in ultra vacuum and cryogenic vacuum and other simulated space environments to measure friction and wear of materials. Um, we've done, we put some experiments on the space station, I don't know, probably a decade ago now. We're currently designing a new set of experiments to go up on the materials on the International Space Station Experiments MISI platform. Um, and we look at a range of coatings and other um, composites and advanced materials. Um, ways I'm looking to interact with people, anyone making multifunctional materials, coatings, composites, and other material synthesis. Um, also people doing surface science and material characterization. I know UCF has a pretty uh, robust surface science center. Um, and people generally connected with the applications and challenges of space, um, connected with industry, and interested in working on proposals together or funding, you know, looking at materials reliability in the extreme environments of space for you know, various functionalities.
and that's all I have. But happy to look forward and, and collaborate with anyone on the call. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rebecca Sweat. I'm a professor also at the FAMU FSU College of Engineering. Uh, similar to Brandon, I'm also at the High Performance Materials Institute, our materials uh, research lab uh, at uh, FAMU and FSU. My uh, background is kind of in the uh, the the joining between uh, simulation and experimental work in uh, extreme environments. So I do I work in the multi-scale digital twin area, mostly for composite materials. I've also focused in um, hybrid composites with nanomaterials, uh, trying to understand how we can make multifunctional uh, materials and also go down to the digital twin where we can make predictive simulations and do more of a material by design approach. So I can help with uh, multi-scale modeling of composite structures uh, and even non-composite structures if, if you don't have those and uh, manufacturing characterization of high performance composite materials uh, in, in some extreme environments. So we have some equipment that can uh, manufacture more high temperature composites as well. Uh, what I'm looking for as far as collaborations is a unique application. So people that are connected with the application uh, for composites and modeling needs and potentially molecular scale simulations for inputs into my mesoscale models. And anyone who wants to collaborate in general and has a good idea, I'm happy to work together. Uh, the, these are some of the these are some of the works that we've uh, done in my group. Uh, and constantly working to discover new challenges in space related research and advancing Florida for space technology. Thank you. Hello. I am uh, Parks Easter with the X-Health Lab here at the University of Central Florida. Um, uh, Dr. Brissett talked a little bit about uh, it, but basically what we do is we uh, recreate the surfaces of um, the moon, Mars, and asteroids um, through simulation of um, the regolith or, uh, you know, soil or dirt, essentially. <laughs> um, my personal expertise is on the lunar regolith uh, simulants, um, as well as the geotechnical properties of both those simulants and the actual lunar surface. So, um, you know, my interest in the community is just collaborating with researchers on new space science projects using the lunar regolith. Um, if any, you know, material characterization labs are interested in doing any sort of analysis on the materials, you know, we would love to collaborate, get feedback on our materials. Um, if anyone has any uh, rover ideas or just anything, you know, that would be applicable to the surface of the moon, we would love to collaborate and um, work to make any of those experiments more accurate and fit your needs. Um, like I kind of already said, I have primarily knowledge on the actual regular regular simulant availability and processing, as well as the applications of simulant, uh, not only for the scientific experiments, but also things like educational outreach, um, you know, to better um, show your research, maybe putting it in some lunar regolith just to show the application, um, if there's any educational outreach aspect. Um, and um, I also do research on some of the geotechnical characteristics such as angle of repose, flowability, um, all that kind of stuff to make sure our uh, simulants are, uh, you know, matching the actual lunar regolith and an accurate um, simulant material for um, the lunar surface. So that should be it for me. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Berin Tensel. I'm a professor at Florida International University in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. I serve and represent FIU on the board of NASA Florida Space Grant Consortium. On the consortium, as some of you may be aware, that there is one representative from each higher uh, education institution in Florida, including community colleges. I did a two-year uh, research uh, internship at Kennedy Space Center on uh, water recovery, reuse, and closed-loop water recovery for long space missions, and I enjoyed that experience. Uh, I also conducted a feasibility study for commercialization of an ammonia recovery technology from astronaut wastewater, and we are right now looking into how to apply that technology for Earth applications. And my areas of interest is, I'm an environmental engineer, is water recovery, recovery of materials from wastewater. And I also do, I heard uh, some of you mentioning this, a, a lot of sp surface related research for uh, contaminants uh, and how regulate surface characteristics uh, affect the contaminant sorption on surfaces. My uh, research projects are mostly on infrastructure for space habitats. That is an area I am interested in and sustainable materials reuse, recovery of materials from waste and waste management in space and modular systems for water treatment, again, for space applications, mostly recovery, water recovery. And I have had several research uh, projects uh, sponsored by uh, Kennedy Space Center and NASA, and I am interested in collaborating, and I want to express my appreciation to Mike and Julie for organizing today's uh, meeting. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to be here today. I'm formerly a professor in Canada. I was in the College of Medicine in Pharmacology. I was also adjunct in Biomedical Engineering. I'm new in Florida. I'm a professor and chair at Nova Southeastern University. There's a, not only do I have an interest in space science, but there's a growing interest at Nova, especially with us featuring the South Florida Space Day just a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, my interests are in aging, inflammation, mitochondria, sex differences in, in brain metabolism. Um, I've reviewed grants for NASA, DOD, and NIH. Uh, more recently, I've been reviewing grants for over 30 years. I have active funding in both my lab in Canada and here in my new lab uh, in Florida. Um, I'm looking for collaborators to help me model microgravity and radiation. Uh, like I said, I have specific inf uh, expertise in inflammation and, and cognitive science. I'm hoping to do a lot more with uh, mitochondrial function uh, and how mitochondrial function gets uh, affected in space flight. Uh, long-term space flight. Um, you can see some of the methods that I've used uh, currently and in the past involve cell molecular behavioral testing for memory. I have expertise in both animal models and clinical trials. Um, also expertise in neuroimaging, uh, gene, genomics, gene chip assessments, and electrophysiology, and also some uh, experience with testing human memory uh, with standard cognitive instruments. So um, I have a link here for my NIH uh, bio and also my LinkedIn profile. So I'd like to talk to people more about potential collaboration. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Carrie Donaldson Hanna. I'm currently an assistant professor at the University of Central Florida. And my area of interest is really trying to understand the formation and evolution of solar system bodies, particularly airless bodies, so planets without atmospheres. And I do this by combining uh, telescopic and spacecraft observations of solar system planetary bodies, along with uh, lab measurements. And in particular, I like to work at thermal infrared wavelengths as well as visible to near infrared wavelengths. My research also focuses on making lab measurements 
of well-characterized samples under the appropriate environmental conditions. And so we have laboratory facilities here at UCF uh, where we have the ability to measure uh, reflectance and emissivity spectra across the visible to near infrared and thermal infrared range. And so we can use those um, measurements of analog materials, including the exolith simulants, along with actual Apollo soil samples, as, as well as terrestrial minerals, um, to interpret uh, the remote sensing observations that we have in hand. Um, and we can also use those measurements to to study and to design and develop future instrumentation. Um, and speaking of that, um, uh, NAS, uh, Addie Dove and I here at UCF just recently won um, a PRISM2 proposal where we will be uh, leading an instrument suite of, uh, or a suite of instruments on a lander and rover that will go to the moon um, in 2026. And so we're uh, interested in meeting and connecting with individuals uh, that have also expertise in spectroscopy um, and dust. And uh, please get in touch with us if you're interested in working with us. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. I am Han Shul Cho uh, from Emory Riddle Aeronautical University. I joined Emory Riddle last year, and this is my third semester. Uh, my research interests include aerodynamics, satellite formation flight, and its application to on-orbit servicing and debris uh, remover. Uh, constraint robust optimal control for general dynamic systems and space ro uh, robotics. Uh, through this Florida uh, opportunity, I'm seeking potential research teams to publish research articles and to secure external funding. Also, I'd like to learn what other faculty or professionals are doing and seeking innovative ideas through this collaboration. I'm also inter uh, interested in expanding network to enhance opportunities in research teaching and knowledge uh, technology transfer. I'm hoping to hold periodic workshop meetings between the Florida universities, colleges, and other institutions. I have many years experiences in uh, constraint, robust optimal control, and can share state-of-the-art technology for unorbit servicing and space debris remover that are very urgent nowadays. Also, I can contribute to international collaboration with universities and institutions in East Asia, uh, East, uh, East Asia especially Korea and Japan. Uh, through uh, Florida, I'm seeking help with uh, effective grant writing, writing, uh, editing skills. Also, I need uh, guidance about how to create a good rapport with uh, program managers from sponsoring agencies. You can help me connect to local industry and government organizations for developing space flight related hardware in house. Uh, I look forward to collaborating with you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sherry Emer at Florida Gulf Coast University in Fort Myers. I have a background in sensory neuroscience and experience with ground operations at Kennedy Space Center working on rodent research missions, both of which have led me to my current projects. I'm interested in establishing collaborations with my Florida colleagues that are also interested in the physiological effects of space exploration. I'm currently working on neuroplasticity and mechanoreception within the visual system and also dental structures of spaceflight specimens. Because I'm interested in maximizing animal health and welfare, both on orbit and on Earth, I'm currently evaluating the use of zebrafish to explore space-related questions. I'm also interested in student training because biology undergraduate students at FGCU are required to complete two semesters of research in order to graduate. So I advise about eight to 10 undergraduate researchers every semester, and I'm looking for collaborations to assist with those projects so that we can collect valuable data. 
Recently, we presented two posters at the Society for Gravitational and Space Research Conference, one on using zebrafish to simulate microgravity effects and also provide student training, and another poster by my student who presented data on those dental structures in spaceflight mouse specimens. I have experience with acquiring spaceflight animal tissues from NASA Ames Life Sciences Data Archive and also ISS US National Labs. Students in my lab process tissue, perform immunohistochemistry and fluorescence microscopy, and of course the associated analyses, especially in image J. I'm experienced with navigating animal health and welfare requirements, and I'm the IACUC chair at FGCU. I'm looking for collaborators that can also contribute to components of broader projects and assist with developing proposals both for funding and potential future payloads to the space station. I'm also looking to establish relationships with private space organizations, and of course, I want to promote a positive public opinion and appreciation for space exploration and research. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Nizi Pala. I'm a professor at the uh, Electrical and Computer Engineering Department of Florida International University. Uh, my research interests include uh, nanoscale materials and devices uh, for photonic and electronic applications, particularly high frequency um, RF from all DC all the way up to millimeter waves and terahertz um, applications. Uh, we are particularly working on terahertz devices for communication, uh, imaging, and sensing, uh, reconfigurable RF surfaces um, and antennas, um, also biosensors, uh, biochemical sensors, uh, wearable sensors for health and uh, well being mon monitoring, also free space optical communication. Uh, we have capabilities for uh, micro and nano fabrication of various devices, um, testing at uh, almost any frequency from DC to uh, millimeter wave, terahertz, and even at optical frequencies from uh, uh, visible to UV. Uh, we have experience in uh, design and simulation of those devices as well. Um, I would like to collaborate with people who are interested in those fields, um, particularly communication and micro and nano scale devices. Um, I would like to develop jointly develop proposals and uh, other projects. We are also uh, we also have um, educational and training programs uh, uh, and uh, our youth site uh, in our department for summer internship as well as um, a program with uh, a Japanese institute uh, for summer internship in Japan for nanoscale materials. Hi, I'm Alicia Boimel Green. I'm assistant professor at Florida International University um, in the Department of Mechanical and Materials Engineering. Uh, my interest is in micro nanofluidics and active matter um, and complex fluids. Uh, generally, my work focuses on electrokinetic uh, forcing mechanisms. Um, I currently um, I am interested in identifying new partners for collaborative research in microgravity. I guess my fundamental space interest is in utilizing uh, space conditions to advance a uh, fundamental understanding of physics, um, specifically in, in the realm of fluids research. Um, I have obtained recently NSF CASAS funding um, to explore active matter in microgravity uh, conditions. With that, we're working with implementation partners. Um, so I have some experience with that. Um, my other hat <laughs> that I wasn't going to bring up, but based on some of the other presentations, I work on developing real-time monitoring systems for biological specimens. And specifically, we're working with fish species um, and with Artemia and rotifers um, and Mai Mai. So we develop platforms that can do real-time sensing of their health. Um, at the small scale. Um, I am, yeah, interested in collaborating and finding other like-minded researchers in Florida, putting together proposals and 
Um, on an educational level, I would love to utilize space research as a motivator um, and a way to bring new students into STEM and excite them because I think space is really exciting. Hello. I'm, Sil I'm Silvaraj uh, from RCB Observatory. The observatory which is managed by UCF uh, under the cooperative agreement. Uh, I'm interested in doing research in the atmospheric physics, especially in the atmospheric turbulence. Uh, so the atmospheric turbulence it is um, very much important since it is uh, contributes to the energetics of the atmosphere. And then my interest lies mostly in the tropical uh, atmospheric turbulence. Since um, the tropical the, um, tropical tropopause, as we call it, that's the gateway to the uh, pollutant entrance to the uh, global uh, uh, global uh, pollutions. Uh, like it rises to the, through the tropical tropopause, and then it uh, spreads the pollutants uh, around the globe. So um, that region where it enters, that we call it, uh, call it as a UTLS, it's the uh, upper troposphere and lower stratosphere. So my interest lies in studying the uh, atmospheric dynamics in that particular layer, uh, like uh, what is the mixing of uh, mass and then energy and momentum how it is transported uh, using like uh, uh, radar systems. So I'm interested in collaborating uh, with the uh, people who are interested in the atmospheric uh, physics mm -hmm. using radar systems and uh, uh, GPS radio studies. Mm -hmm. I'm a early career researcher. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rich Lian. I'm the professor at uh, the Florida State University. My research is more focused on the advanced composite and the nanomaterials, multifunctional nanomaterials for the aerospace applications. Also, I'm the director of the High Performance Material Institute at the uh, FAMU-FSU College of Engineering. So welcome you guys to visit us. And my research is focused on the new generation of the space you know, exploration structure materials with much more you know, lightweight of feature and the multifunction uh, properties. We are the one of the first uh, um, NASA Space Technology Research Institute, STRI. And also we are carrying out the large Air Force multifunction uh, materials project. We also involved in the NASA the in-space manufacturing several projects here. And uh, we're really looking for the, you know, what is beyond the carbon fiber composites, which can, you know, provide to the next step, the space exploration. Also HPI, HPMI as uh, Rebecca and uh, Brian mentioned that we have the, you know, more than $25 million equipment for the materials, non-materials calculation and manufacturing. And we are love to, you know, collaboration with our colleagues at the Florida in the space, in aerospace materials and manufacturing. We also have uh, several the more advanced uh, 3D manufacturing machines and we can do the multiple materials printing to the integrated manufacturing. That is one of the key components for the future space, you know, the exploration application. And uh, with that, that's pretty much what I have. Good morning, everyone. Um, pleasure to be here. My name is uh, Arjuna Madhanayaka. I'm an associate professor of electrical and computer engineering at uh, FIU in Miami. So uh, I've been at FIU for about four years now, and my uh, areas of expertise and interests are 
uh, roughly across uh, radio frequency and uh, lower frequency electronics, including antenna arrays, uh, electromagnetics, analog and digital systems. So basically I'm a circuits and systems plus signal processing person. Um, I also have some experience with radio astronomy while I was a postdoc in Canada. So I am familiar with radio telescope instrumentation and things like that. My interest in Florida space is to team with like-minded researchers, which is essentially you, uh, and going jointly going after grant funding. So I know uh, Julie mentioned uh, you know funding, so I'm very much on the same page with that. Uh, I'm also thinking about building community infrastructure. For example, NSF has large grant opportunities for community infrastructure starting from $20 million all the way to $150 million, right? So I'm looking for places to explore uh, that kind of opportunity. And I think this group is very uh, positive for that. How can I help you? Um, I can help by being a senior personnel, a co-PI or a lead PI, depending on the topic. Uh, I would be happy to brainstorm ideas with any of you in this group uh, or conduct teaming meetings, uh, create opportunities for engagement uh, and create a local community of space researchers in Florida. How can you help me? Um, I would appreciate intro introductions to you know, the space community because we are not very connected at FIU to space uh, folks, uh, not as much as to CF. Uh, and my research areas in electronics, radio frequency systems, and uh, computing. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Rachel Seidler. I'm a professor at the University of Florida, um, and I have been funded by NASA, Trish, NSBRI for about 25 years. I work with human subjects. I study uh, neuroplasticity, changes in brain and behavior that occur with spaceflight and with uh, spaceflight analog environments. So. I use a variety of brain imaging, brain stimulation approaches. We measure sensory and motor function, cognitive function. Um, and um, I'm, I'm quite happy to see a couple of neuro folks on the call here. That's exciting. I also do some work in the area of aging. Um, there's not a lot going on at, at UF per se in space health. So again, connecting with people at other universities that that work in the area of space health would be great. I also am very excited to share that I currently have a Trish Diversity Partnership Grant. Uh, this is a one-year award where with a team we are offering um, for postdocs and faculty that either work in space health or that are interested in working in space health. We're offering lots of networking, um, grant application workshops, et cetera. These are particularly targeting women and underrepresented minorities. And minorities in this case is very broadly defined. It just means people that have been underrepresented in receiving space health research grants um, in the past. So happy to talk about either space neuroscience or um, diversity outreach.
Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Redwan Akasemi, and I'm a professor, a research professor at the University of South Florida. Um, my work is uh, mostly for um, it's robotics and assistive technologies and virtual reality for assisting people with disabilities. Um, and I work in, in so many different domains, uh, primarily focused towards uh, cognitive and uh, physical disabilities. Um, and, you know, I've had some, you know, some work with, with the uh, DOD uh, and some relevant work with the, with the space, uh, NASA, and I felt that a lot of the things that I've done um, in virtual, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality assistive technologies are also relevant to assistive technologies in, in space. Um, so, so this is my main, uh, my main drive. Uh, I work with user interfaces as well. Um, and the way I think about this is that, you know, I can be, you know, helpful to you through use inspired solutions to different problems that we might face that involve um, virtual reality or, or uh, assistive technologies and robotics. Uh, grant writing, um, I'm involved in, in many uh, ways in grant writing as well. Um, and I also can provide expertise in robotics and assistive technologies. And, you know, I always seek and, and you know, try to work with collaborators as well. Um, a lot of these collaborations are, you know, multidisciplinary and, you know, it involves more than just robotics. Um, you know, uh, we, I'm, I'm even involved in some uh, blue economy for um, oceanic studies and, and fisheries. So, you know, collaboration is always one of the things that I, I try to seek as well. Uh, how I can help? Well, thank you everyone uh, for presenting this morning. Really appreciate everyone's uh, preparing those slides and taking a few minutes today to introduce themselves to potential collaborators across the state. Following the program this morning, we will post the, uh, the recording of the Zoom session here along with everyone's slides to florida.org. Uh, so you can go back and, and review anyone's presentation and find their contact information if you'd like to connect and, and build some uh, potential uh, collaborations. Uh, we'll also send out a list of potential funding opportunities related to space research that have been curated by our Florida team um, and would highly encourage you to reach out to the research development office at your institution to help facilitate some of these conversations. They can be an absolutely valuable resource in everything from identifying opportunities and collaborators all the way through uh, strategic positioning and proposal development.